I thought it was time for a Brunello masterclass. So let's do this. All right, welcome back, Drinking It In. I'm your host, Chris Cassara. We are here to help you know more and drink better. I realize I set myself up in a bit of a quandary here. I'm trying to figure out, okay, um, where should I be? Because I got three wines in front of me, which is not typical for this channel. Um, but, you know, we did the Rosso di Montalcino and Brunello di Montalcino video the other day. And um, besides not liking um, my description of, uh, you know, what, what the difference between Brunello and, and Rosso are, um, I also figured it'd be fun to do a bit of a master class on Brunello. Look at um, a few different wines, right, that I have or had in my cellar uh, that I've opened about four hours ago um, and see, you know, just see how, how different and fun this classification can be. So I have a uh, 2007 Brunello, I have a 2010 Brunello and a 2010 single vineyard Brunello. So, you know, I figured it'd be a good a few different um, examples. Um, actually, as you go from uh, from right to left, yeah, you're right to left, um, they get, these get um, pricier, right? La Potarina is a very good, um, reasonable brand. Uh, Chachi, Joni loves Chachi. Uh, Chachi is, uh, fairly well priced, but you know, starting to rise in price here. And then this is a single vineyard Brunello, so that's gonna be just more expensive in general. So um, let's get started. I'm gonna shift these out so I don't feel like I'm talking through bottles though. Um, so Brunello di Montalcino, and think of Tuscany. Montalcino is a uh, town in Tuscany, and Brunello de Montalcino is a very specific DOCG within uh, Montalcino. So, you know, up hillside town, um, the wines that uh, they make are just, they're stunning. They're big. If you don't like big red wines, you're not going to like Brunellos. Um, these guys, uh, you know, they don't um, see the light of day for five years, so they don't see, you keep, they're not available until uh, five years after the release date. So we're in 2020, we're just starting to see the 2015 Brunellos uh, come onto the market. Um, that's because there are regulations in terms of how long they need to age. Um, again, five years uh, need to be aged. And, um, you know, two years in oak, um, you know, are the minimums here. So uh, I'm gonna pour these. I'm, I'm hoping that we're gonna see uh, some of these wines have a little bit of a, uh, a brown edge to them. Um, all right, let's, how are we gonna do this? Yeah, we're gonna do it this way. I'm gonna put these guys next to each other. They are pretty. All right, and then the San Filippo. Actually, I'm gonna keep them over here. Okay, what's, so right off the bat, what's interesting is, you know, as, as red wines age, they kind of turn a little, um, you know, they go from like a bright red to more of like a garnet and down into, they start getting a little more, um, you know, maroon and brown, brownish, not brown, but brownish. And um, the 2007 over here, this particular 2010, um, starting to show that sort of brown color. This guy, um, this particular 2010 Brunello, is still very uh, dark, dark purple. Interesting. Um, that should come across in the taste in terms of maybe this guy will still be will be um, fruitier and uh, feel younger than it is because it hasn't uh, it hasn't quite gotten the, the wrinkles of, of age, so to speak. Um, we're going to go through a taste of each of these first, and um, and then we'll um, you know we'll come back to uh, to these if if needed. So. Um, I'm going to start from this side, right? Because this way we end with the um, with the oldest. Because in theory that should be you know more of a you know more nuanced and uh, a good progression. So let's start. I'm going to start here with this is a 2010 San Filippo Brunello di Montalcino from the La Lucera um, vineyard. So you know we uh, tried the San we had the San Filippo the regular Brunello bottling recently. Um, you know, really big, stunning, figgy, plummy wine. Let's see what this guy is, is like. Different. 
Very different. Okay, so that's pretty cool. The um, it's definitely fruity. The the fact that this wine hasn't really turned and and, and not showing any. It's not really showing any age in the actual color. Um, you know, the fruit is still very present, not getting a lot of those tertiary uh, notes that that tend to develop. Very berried, um, black berried, black cherried. There's a little bit of an inky note, but it's not as not as heavy as the other one that we tried uh, the prior episode. I'll link that here. Hmm. It's like silk. So silky. There's a little creaminess to this one, which is interesting. I feel the tannins. I realize I have no water near me, which is which may be a problem. But um, yeah, this. So the they're, the fruits are they're dark fruits. There's a lot. There's some vanilla notes, and you know maybe that's the the creaminess that I'm talking about. So, but this wine has barely started to age. Um, kind of hoping I have one more in my cellar, but I don't know. I think I do. We'll see. Really nice fruity creaminess. Kind of like strawberries and cream, you know, like they used to, like they do in uh, overseas in the UK. Damn. Okay. Good to know that uh, this one is behaving itself as it ages. Okay. So next, this guy, so is this still, we're staying in the 2010 vintage. Um, this is the Chachi Piccolomini um, de Aragona uh, Brunello de Montalcino. I actually have had this wine before once when I was in Las Vegas after I had bought these bottles, which was kind of fun. Um, and it, it happened to show up on a wine list by the glass. Um, so if I do recall, it was a big wine. It was big and powerful and spice, like filled with spices. But it was the first time I'm trying it out of the cellar and uh, out of the cellar for you rat fans. Definitely not as big as it was that first time I had it, which was three, four years ago. So definitely looking at a lot of black cherries, I'm getting olive notes. Um, black olives, not green olives, black olives. Black cherries and black olives mashed up together. Chachi. It's really, it smells so pretty though. Yeah, this is, this is some, this is some good stuff. I mean, you know, I'm just opening these things for you guys, right? Get you a little knowledge. Um, you know, I, yeah, I, all right. I get to drink the wine. It's exciting. Um, but hopefully you can, you'll, uh, by the end of this video, you'll understand some of the nuances that can come up in the uh, Brunello, Brunello wines. Yeah, so big time, black cherries, black olives. Just, just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous nose. Hmm. I mean, 2010 has a reputation as an amazing vintage. At this stage, these wines are drinking just so nicely. Very smooth, again, smooth as silk, like not, uh, there's tan the tannins are there, but not omnipresent. Like, you know they're there, but, you know, they're just sort of, you know, complimenting the, the, um, the notes of the wine. This, this, uh, I'll be honest, this smells better than it tastes. It tastes great, but the smell, the, the, the nose of this wine is just ridiculous and could be, uh, you know, it could be, uh, you know, a fun-filled afternoon for you. Just sit here and smell the wine. There's a perfumey note that kind of comes through on the, um, on the palate. I'm going to reverse kind of what I just said before. I mean, the nose is better than the taste, but that, but this wine in, in, this wine is just 
beautiful. Freaking beautiful. Okay. Damn. Okay. Um, Poor La Poderina 2007. Uh, Brunello Di Montalcino. Got to follow these two. It's not going to be easy. Um, I've had a few vintages of La Poderina. I think I might have re reviewed it um, certainly on, over on Instagram, maybe on the channel before. Um, these wines, so they're a little more, they're a little, um, they're on the lower side of the, from a pricing perspective in Brunello. Um, they're not cheap. You're not going to get a bottle like this for $25, but you know, if a Brunello is going to start at that 35 to 40, somewhere in the 35 to 45 range, you know, this is going to be in there. They're more friendly than some of the big Brunellos, some of the other Brunellos, right? They're not, a, they tend to not be as big. Right, they're usually a little more, um, you know, just light, a little lighter and friendly. So friendlier. So let's see what uh, let's see what this brings to us. And as as I say that, it smells dark. It's it's a but it's a, it's a black cherry dark, so it's not going to be um, very. It's not going to be big. There's some baking spice in here. There's a fig. There's definitely a fig in here. Figs, black cherries, baking spice. What is this? 2007, right? 2007. Yeah. This guy's 13 years old. Still a baby. Really nice. Almost has a little bit of a licorice note to it. Black cherries and licorice. Um, like I said, these guys, the wines from them are a little lighter than some of these. It definitely comes off it's, uh, on the palate. Not as uh, long of a finish, um, you know, but but just, just delicious. Where these are delicious and they they have more to say. Right, so I guess, man, so these are, I mean, all three of these are winners, right? Big time. Um, I do think that, you know, this being priced a little lower than these two actually makes sense because it's a little bit simpler. Um, these wines definitely have a lot of complexity. Um, you know, I think the, what we've, what I've learned today, or not what I've learned, but well, yeah, what I've learned. I learned a lot during this. 2010, um, plenty of time. If you've got 2010 Brunellos, you don't have to drink them now. Um, they're delicious now, but the bottom line is there's a lot of life left in these guys. Uh, 2007, I don't know. I'd have to check my, the vintage charts and stuff. I'm not sure the reputation of the vintage, but, um, this guy's drinking really well today too, and still has a lot of life left in it. Um, so La Poderina, a friendly Brunello. Chachi, nah, Chachi Piccolomini, um, a big uh, brawny Brunello, and uh, San Filippo, just uh, kind of right, right in between those two. It's 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 got some some um, some weight to it, but um, you know, really nice and fruity. Um, you know, hopefully you've gotten something out of this here. You know, we, we're trying to build your wine knowledge up here. Um, you know, let me know what you like, what you don't like. Um, and we'll see you again for more wine videos soon. Cheers.